the witch who died twice that inspired the handmaid's tale yes I'm a, yes, yes i'm yes, a yes. huge fan of that uh that series so okay can you great, can you yeah. touch on that one because this might this might pe- perk some interest here <laughs> so this was a woman who lived in hadley massachusetts which is out in western massachusetts the western part of the state away from the coast and um in the 1650s her, her her name was mary mary webster i'm going to check that just to make sure but it was mary webster um so she had been accused of being a witch in hadley massachusetts and she was sent to boston for trial to you know for a higher level court to approve her you know basically her execution right. and the judges in mass in boston were like no you know what she's innocent she's not a witch we're sending her back to hadley so she was sent back to Hadley and a man in Hadley, a wealthy man in Hadley, who had been one of the people who had accused her of witchcraft. Once she came back to Hadley, he started to um, experience various symptoms of witchcraft. And at first, it, people weren't sure if he was being bewitched because he was feeling a lot of pain. Right? He was feeling pain in his abdomen and things like this. And he would say, oh, you know, God is doing this to me. God is, you know, testing me, but I'm a good, pious Protestant Puritan. I understand this is just God's test for me. Then the pain kept getting worse and worse and worse. And finally, he started to scream out, you know what? Mary Webster is doing this to me. She's a witch. She's cursing me. (laughs) And I can see her specter floating around my head, attacking me. (laughs) And so his family and friends like, oh, Mary Webster, she's always been in trouble. She's always been a witch. Um, and, you know, various things started to happen in the bewitched man's house, like the medicine they used to treat him would disappear. People said they felt invisible animals rubbing against their bodies and things like this. And, but they couldn't do anything to Mary Webster because she had already been found innocent of witchcraft by the judges in Boston. So an angry mob actually went to Mary Webster's house, grabbed her, dragged her out into this cold, oh, snowy night and hanged her from a tree. Oh, jeez. Uh, and then they cut her down for some reason. I, I don't know if they thought she was dead or if someone talked them some sense to them. But they cut her down and then they buried her in the snow. And she actually survived that. She survived being hanged. Oh my God. And um, she lived for like another 40 years or something in Hadley. The guy who said he was bewitched by her like died within a couple of weeks. But Mary Webster lived for another 40 years or so in Hadley. And interestingly, um, Margaret Atwood who's the author of The Handmaid's Tale and various other books, she was researching her family genealogy and discovered she was a descendant of Mary Webster. Oh, no way. And she wanted to write about her. She said, oh, I'm going to write a book. Like, this is a great story. And she originally thought she would write a book about Mary Webster's ordeal and then decided she didn't want to have to do sort of all the research on, like, Puritan life in 1650s Hadley, Massachusetts. But she took the ideas from that and wrote The Handmaid's Tale. That's crazy. That is a, that's amazing because that that's I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a great series. It's a I haven't I read the book. I've never <laughs> seen the series. But again, it's like set in Massachusetts. Yeah. And it's almost like the Puritans have returned. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? They've kind of returned from the past and you know, lots of hangings I know in the Handmaid's Tale and things like that and other executions. 